live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Our top story, a tragic sequence of events takes the life of a toddler. A little boy gets a hold of a loaded gun, fires it at his two-year-old cousin. Police say it looks like an accident. But there were adults present when it happened this morning at a home on Duffy Street in Muskoy. CBS 2's Nicole Comstock is live at the scene with an update on the investigation. Nicole? Well, people who live here in this neighborhood are obviously heartbroken about what happened this morning, but they also want to know how this four-year-old child was able to get his hands on a loaded gun in the first place. An unthinkable family tragedy inside this Muskoy home between two young children after one of them found a gun. At this point, they believe that a four-year-old child got a hold of a handgun and shot accidentally shot the two-year-old child. Cindy Bachman with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department says the two-year-old girl and four-year-old boy were cousins and both lived here. The kid was in the wrong place at the wrong time and it just, you know, they got a hold to it, didn't know what they had, you know. And boom, yeah. it just happened. Neighbor Columbus McBath says he used to see the little girl playing in the front yard. How he saw her today absolutely broke his heart. Actually, all I seen was them bringing the kid out, putting him in the ambulance. He says it looked like she had been shot in her chest. It was a patch right there, yeah, and they was pumping on it, you know, and I just try, trying to keep her alive. The sheriff's department says several adults who were in the home at the time were taken in for questioning. Neighbors say that included the victim's mother. We don't know at this time how the child got the gun, who it belongs to, where it was being kept. Now, investigators say the adults in the home and the gun owner could potentially face charges, but at this time, they're not saying what those charges might be. Reporting live in Muskoy, Nicole Comstock, CBS 2 News. Most of the evacuation orders have been lifted following this brush fire in Corona. The Skyline fire was breaking news yesterday at 5 o'clock. More than 250 acres have burned, and the fire is 5% contained. Well, Garth Kemp, the temperatures and the fire risk are about to shoot up across the area, right? Well, yeah, Pat, temperatures are going to go up. We're not seeing anything yet on red flag warnings. I mean, don't let that fool you. We should treat it always that way. But you're right, it's going to get really hot. We'll be chasing some more records around here. Right now, downtown Los Angeles, 78 degrees, winds are calm. Humidity right at 50%. We're a little bit cooler in some spots than we were yesterday. Not a lot, but you can see San Bernardino at 93, Corona 87, 78 in the Costa Mesa, 74 Oxnard, 93 right now. Up into the high deserts, excuse me. There you go, about two degrees cooler San Bernardino, almost four degrees or around four degrees cooler in the Lancaster, everybody else pretty much flush as we picked up a little bit of an afternoon sea breeze. So we're going to be talking about excessive heat warnings. I'll show you all of that. We'll get you into this prolonged heat wave getting ready to come our way. How does it compare to the last one? We'll show you coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you too. Look forward to that, Garth. Thank you so much. Let's go to some breaking news right now. The so-called preppy masher has turned himself in. He's accused of grabbing and touching women at malls in Canoga Park and Woodland Hills. Now, police say Elon Lerner walked into Canoga Park Station and surrendered this afternoon. Apparently, several people saw him on CBS2 and called the police tip line. Lerner was booked on a charge of felony sexual battery. A Hollywood heavyweight is fired from a major superhero franchise. James Gunn, who directed the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, is out after a series of controversial tweets surfaced. CBS2's Peter Dowd is live in West L.A. with the fallout and what Gunn has to say now, Peter. Pat, most of the offensive tweets are from 2008 to 2012 and had been deleted, but they were brought to light earlier this week, and now James Gunn will no longer be involved with Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a billion dollar franchise, and the third installment of Guardians of the Galaxy is scheduled to hit theaters in 2020. But Disney has now fired writer director James Gunn after a series of old tweets joking about pedophilia and rape resurfaced this week most of them far too offensive to show. They include, Eagle Snatches Kid is what I call it when I get lucky, and Three Men and a Baby They Had Sex With, hashtag unromantic movies. Gunn is liberal and frequently tweets about his opposition to President Trump. He drew the ire of conservative personalities who recently posted the deleted tweets. The chairman of Disney issued a statement. The offensive attitudes and statements discovered on James' Twitter feed are indefensible and inconsistent with our studio's values, and we have severed our business relationship with him.
I think that he has a lot of loyal fans who aren't going to be happy about this, but at the same time, I don't really know what else Disney would have done in this situation. Michael Nordine is an editor at IndieWire. He says guns firing is a cautionary tale to other Hollywood heavyweights about posting anything offensive. They're just so overt and over the top that it's like, who, who are you making this joke for, really? Gunn apologized on Twitter, saying, For the record, when I made these shocking jokes, I wasn't living them out. I know this is a weird statement to make, it seems obvious, but still, here I am saying it. Anyway, that's the completely honest truth. I used to make a lot of offensive jokes. I don't anymore. I don't blame my past self for this, but I like myself more and feel like a more full human being and creator today. Love you to you all. Gunn was also expected to take part in a panel at Comic-Con, which is happening right now in San Diego, but not anymore. He's also taken down his personal website. Reporting live in West L.A., Peter Dout, CBS 2 News. Peter, thank you. Well, attacked out of the blue, a man was beaten and then punched outside of a Culver City restaurant. The victim knocked unconscious. He was taken to a hospital with severe head injuries. Police say the suspect took off with another man and a woman in a white sedan, and police are still looking for those three people. A worker was killed in a construction accident today near the eastbound 10 freeway in Pomona. The man fell about 30 feet off a wall and was pinned under a forklift. Paramedics say he died at the scene. Cal OSHA is investigating. Neither the man's age nor his identity has been released. And another stunner about the Trump White House. The president's former lawyer reportedly recorded a chat between them about paying off a former Playboy playmate. That playmate, according to reports, is Karen McDougal. She claims she had an affair with the president in 2006. The New York Times reports in September of 2016, Michael Cohen recorded a conversation with then-candidate Trump about paying off McDougal. That payment never happened. Instead, McDougal sold her story to the National Enquirer, which never ran it. The publisher is a good friend of President Trump's. The tape was seized by the FBI in a raid earlier this year and is believed to be one of several recordings made by Cohen. We'll stick with politics now. An Orange County congressman reacts when confronted about his name being brought up in a federal investigation of an accused Russian agent. CBS2 political reporter Dave Bryan joins us now with what got Dana Rohrbacher so fired up. Dave? Yeah, Pat and Jeff, tempers were flaring when congressional, or rather congressman Dana Rohrbacher, never the shy retiring type, got into a heated discussion with reporters today. They were asking him questions about the Russia investigation, reports of his possible connections, but he wanted to talk about immigration and attacking Democrats. No, there's no conditions. You can ask whatever you want. Huntington Beach Congressman Dana Rohrbacher told reporters he was there to talk about immigration issues at a news conference outside an ICE facility in Orange County, but they could ask him anything they want. But when a journalist asked him about reports he was connected to a woman who was allegedly being scrutinized as part of the Russian meddling and collusion investigation, Rohrbacher quickly changed his tune. Yeah, I think you should be, you should be ashamed of yourself for trying to divert attention onto another issue. I, 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 wait a minute, hey, wait a minute, don't argue with me. You're not, are you up here doing the press conference? Okay. Who, who do you represent? KBC Radio. Okay, and you're, they teach you at KBC Radio not to let someone make his case and interrupt uh, him? If you're, is that what they teach you? The is that what they teach you? The wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't get a chance to argue with me. And when reporters persisted in asking questions that Rohrbacher did not want to address, the heat continued to rise. You can ask me whatever you want, and you can ask a follow-up question if you want, but you don't interrupt the guy. That shows you the type of arrogance that I'm talking about. You can, you're going to get a story about Russia rather than the security of our country at, at our borders because that's what you want to do. I don't have to go along with that today. Congressman Rohrbacher, now a little calmer, took a page out of President Trump's book. You're not going to be the one who determines how long my answer is, all right? This is the type of thing that this is the arrogance of the news media that the public, is why the public is, understands when he says fake news, that's what the public understands. Now, Rohrbacher is a political legend in Orange County, but he's facing a tough challenge in the midterms from Democrat Harley Ruda. Ruta charged that Rohrbacher's wild comments today about amount to a sad, shameful attempt to deflect the truth that he is deeply entwined in the Russia investigation. Pat and Jeff, back to you. All right, thanks for that, Dave. Now, there will be much more on the Cohen tapes coming up on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. That's at 6.30 right here on CBS 2.
Well, now turning to baseball, the Dodgers' newest all-star, Manny Machado, met the media today. And he proved that he's not just good at baseball, he's also good at PR, <laughs> something you need to have, right, <laughs> Jamie, when you're here? <laughs> you know what? This was already very excited sure. to have him, but if there were any doubters, this sort of sealed the deal. Uh, yeah, Machado is making his Dodgers debut tonight, batting second and playing shortstop in Milwaukee for the first game of the second half. Machado met his new teammates for the first time today, and after wearing number 13 his entire career, he decided to go with number eight here in Los Angeles, not just because Max Muncy currently wears that number, but as a nod to a local legend and his favorite basketball player. Number eight was, uh, you know, want to change change up, you know, new beginning, new journey, new team. So um, want to go that route. And the other day, I have to throw an athlete out there. Um, I was a huge, huge Kobe fan growing up, so my dog's name is Kobe. So, uh, you know, I had to do a little bit with it too as well. So Machado already endearing himself to fans by acknowledging his love for Kobe Bryant. And now he hopes to live up to Kobe's legacy by delivering a title to Los Angeles. Mm. But I'll tell you what, once the signing was made official, the Vegas odds changed to uh, say that the... Dodgers would make it to back to the World Series. So I'm sure. Yep. So we'll and keep I, our fingers I crossed. Wonder who might be in the stands. Not he hasn't before. Kobe's been yeah, to a game sure. before, but mm -hmm. I bet this time. Wouldn't you think? I I would think so. A little nod. Yeah, I would think so. How nice is that? Mm -hmm. All with, right. with skills like that, he definitely belongs in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Good move. All right. Thanks, Jamie. A fun day on the water for tourists turned into a nightmare. That's right. A duck boat sinks with 31 people on board. Oh. 17 are dead, and now we know most of them came from one family. New information is coming up next. Syringes in the sand. Needles are found in a SoCal park, and we'll tell you where. And breaking news, tornado touches down. We'll tell you just where this one hit. Hey, everybody, I'm Garth Kemp. It's going to get hot around here. Stick around. We'll tell you how hot on the way.